My favourite mod for Grim Dawn right now is the Cataclysm mod. It offers two additional minion classes which can be combined with the Necromancer class from the base game to complement your undead army and create an even bigger army with more minions. If you're not aware, in Grim Dawn you can choose two classes. The first class you get immediately of course, and later on, I'm not sure when exactly, you're able to choose the second class, and you can access all of its skills as well creating a hybrid class. In the base game, if you wanted an additional class for extra minions to supplement the undead from your necromancer class, you could choose the occultist, which grants access to witch-like minions like the raven and the hellhound, or you could go for the shaman, which gives access to the briarthorn and primal spirit minions. What I really like about the cataclysm mod is it adds two new brilliant classes with minion options to complement your necromancy with. The first of these is the Void Caller class, which adds Chaphonic creatures as minions. These Chaphonic creatures are minions of the dead god Chaphon, and they have quite an interesting backstory. I might talk about that someday in a future video. They aren't quite demons, but they fulfill a similar role. The second option is the Druid, which provides a wasp minion and a powerful golem. Both are good options, and I'd like to talk about each of them. I made a character which took Void Cooler as his primary class and drew it as the secondary class, so I could get a good idea of each of the class's minions. The first thing I'd like to say is that I believe the Void Cooler complements the Necromancer's minions a little bit better because the Void Cooler minions are more numerous and they also provide a healing effect. The Druid's minions are very capable though, so I'm going to talk about the Void Cooler first and then come back to the Druid. The first minion the Void Cooler gets is the Devourer. It's a small creature with a huge mouth, and it's an absolutely brilliant minion. It starts out very strong at level 1, easily dispatching your enemies. When you max the skill out, you get an additional 2 devourers, making a total of 3. The great thing about the devourers is, first of all, each of their attacks drains life from the target and gives it to you. It's a small regeneration effect, but it helps out a lot, especially if your primary class is Necromancer because the healing options for necromancers are quite limited. Secondly, the devourers have a taunt effect that causes enemies to target them instead of you. The devourers have a bunch of nice abilities you can give them. They will use these abilities of their own volition. All of these abilities can be leveled up and their effects become stronger as you dump points into them. The first of these is called Piercing Howl. It works in a 6 meter radius and reduces enemy health by 12% and has a 27% chance to petrify the target for 3 seconds. It reduces the target damage by 7% for 10 seconds and it also has a taunt effect to draw fire away from you. I don't know if these effects stack but I doubt that they do. The next ability the Devourer has is the Chaos Strike and it's highly useful. It allows the Devourer to teleport to an enemy which inflicts additional damage and life stealing to up to three enemies in a 180 degree arc. The final ability is Flame Vomit. The Devourer will breathe fire onto enemies and has a range of six meters, and it will also confuse the enemy for three seconds. It does a lot of damage, and the damage will increase the more points you invest into the skill. There's a few reasons why this minion is so awesome. The first reason is because it's got the life steal ability which will constantly heal you while it attacks. It's a huge help to any class, but most of all the Necromancer in my opinion. Secondly, it works like a tank and will draw fire away from your fragile skeletons. This allows them to live longer and deal more damage that they otherwise could not. Finally, it deals three different damage types, physical, chaos, and fire. This helps defeat enemies with resistances to particular damage types. Also, its ability to petrify and confuse the enemy is a cherry on the top of an already delicious cake. I really love this minion. The next minion you get is the Harbinger. The Harbinger is a spellcaster minion that deals heavy damage to enemies. His Void Fire Bolt deals considerable chaos and fire damage in a 2 meter radius and also has a 33% chance to terrify an enemy. He is also capable of buffing you with a chaos shield which provides 15% chaos resistance, as well as life leech, chaos damage, and chaos retaliation. This buff has a 6 meter radius, 
so it will likely buff most of your other minions as well. If you're curious, the Chaos Retaliation just means that if you're struck by an enemy, you'll sometimes shoot a Chaos Bolt at the attacker. You can optionally choose to invest one point into the Metamorphosis skill, which will cause the Harbinger to receive player bonuses instead of pet bonuses. For certain builds this might be good, but since I always jack up my pet bonuses, there's no need for me to take this. You can teach your Harbinger the Death From Below skill, which causes Obsidian Spikes to erupt from the ground and deal physical and chaos damage to enemies. It can also debuff them by knocking them down, slowing them, and reducing their defensive ability. The final ability of the Harbinger is Chaos Mark. This causes chaos damage over time in a 3 meter radius, but more importantly, it reduces the target's armor, physical resistance, and chaos resistance by 10%. This will make all your minions more effective against the enemies cursed by it. Overall, the Harbinger is a great minion, less useful than the Devourers, but it is still important for its DPS and its buffs. The final minion the Voidcaller has to offer is the Void Spawn. The Void Spawn is functionally fine as a minion, but a bit basic. He also scales the player bonuses instead of pet bonuses, so he might be more useful in certain builds. He's fairly tough, and he deals physical damage in an arc with every attack, so the constant splash damage he provides is quite nice. My major complaint with the Void Spawn is just his appearance. He looks like a red guy, not like a Chaphonic Demon, and it's a bit of a shame because there's many more Chaphonic creatures that could have been chosen instead. So my complaint is really a cosmetic one. I wanted to have another cool Chaphonic creature instead of this red guy. The Void Caller has a bunch of other abilities that provide resistances and damage increases to all of your minions, including minions from your other classes like Necromancer, so it's overall a great choice. Next we come to the Druid. The Druid offers less minions than the Void Caller, but these minions are individually more powerful and offer different skill sets. It's mostly about poison and acid damage instead of fire and chaos. Your first minion is the Hive Queen. The Hive Queen is a powerful spellcaster minion, and you can only get one of these. Its Stinger ability fragments to hit multiple enemies at once, and deals a mixture of piercing, poison, and acid damage. It also has the Withering Blast attack, which deals poison damage over 5 seconds, and reduces the damage an enemy deals by 32%. It also reduces the target's armor by 100, and its movement speed by 33%. The next ability the Wasp can get is the Acid Shower ability. It will cause acid and poison damage over a very large area, and it also has a 15% chance to slow the enemy by 50% for 3 seconds. It's quite a good spell because it has a 10 meter radius, and it hits basically every enemy on the screen. The Wasp can also cast it quite frequently. Just like the Harbinger, you can optionally invest a point to transform the Wasp to scale with player bonuses instead of pet bonuses, if you wish. The Wasp is a pretty good minion for DPS, and a worthy addition to any army. I like it quite a lot. The second minion the Druid gets is the Stone Guardian. As you might imagine, he's a huge minion with a large amount of health, and he hits like a truck. The damage he deals is all physical, but he frequently makes use of his powerful cleave ability which disrupts enemy abilities, stuns enemies, or knocks them to the ground. It also generates a large amount of threat to draw enemies in to attack the Guardian instead of you. The Guardian can be upgraded with the Guardian's Presence skill. This provides a passive buff to you and your other minions, with 2% damage absorption, 20% physical damage, and 2% armor, and a 7% reduction to an internal trauma and bleeding durations. Finally, the Stone Guardian can get the Crippling Wave skill, which sends out a shockwave that deals physical damage and stuns and slows enemies. It's quite funny to watch the Stone Guardian wade fearlessly into a sea of enemies and begin to slam and crash them, sending them flying everywhere, while the Varrows tear the helpless enemies to shreds. He's honestly a very good minion, and would make a fine addition to your undead army. The Druid can also get temporary Mini Golem minions with the Stone Barrier skill. There's a 33% chance that when an enemy hits you, a Furious Defender will be spawned. These little guys are like small grey stone guardians, 
and they only last about 10 seconds before they explode, but they do pretty well while they're alive. The stone barrier can be upgraded with the stone shield upgrade. This will protect you if your life falls below 50% by providing 22% damage absorption, 100% damage reflection, and an extra health regeneration of 55 per second. Finally, you can get the Synergize upgrade for your Stone Barrier, which will apply it to your minions as well. There's a heap of other abilities the Druid has on offer, and they're all very good. They mostly focus around armor, healing, poison and acid resistances, and damage. If your main class is a Necromancer, and you're looking for a second set of minions to bolster your undead forces, it's hard for me to recommend one of these classes over the other, because they're both really brilliant in different ways. I'd recommend just choosing whatever you think is cooler, and whatever minions you like the look of better. I personally prefer the awesome Chophonic minions, so the Void Cooler would be my choice. The mod also improves the game in other aspects, or not really improves it, but changes it. Leveling up is way faster. I was on average probably about 15 levels ahead than normal. The boss fights were a bit easier than normal but the random enemy bosses that you find just randomly throughout the map were significantly harder. At one point I was in a battle against 12 elite wasps and I died like at least three times. There's also new items for the two new classes and all the other classes that this mod implements. You'll find equipment that boosts your Chophonic or Druidic minions. You'll also find new potions. Some of these potions improve your attributes and others will give you XP, so you like chug down a potion and you get 10,000 extra XP. So you level up really fast with this mod. Overall I quite like it, because the faster you level up, the quicker you get access to the cooler minions. The mod also implements these funny mysterious lockers. These lockers just drop from enemies, and if you open them you get a bunch of cool items that are scaled to your current level. So overall it's a pretty good mod. It does significantly change the game, but I think it does it in a mostly good way. The only sad thing in my opinion is that the boss fights in the story are just that slight bit weaker for whatever reason, but the rest of the game becomes a bit harder in my opinion. To score the mod's minions I'd give an almost perfect score, a 9 out of 10. My only complaint is I'd like to see more minions and, as I said before, I'd like the Void Fiend to be more Chophonic if possible. But honestly, this is one of those really nice mods that works so well and fits into a game seamlessly. It's not one of those mods that sort of sticks out like a sore thumb with custom graphics or whatever. It could almost be part of the base game if you didn't know better. I didn't encounter any bugs either during my playthrough, so hats off to the developers of this mod, they did a really great job.